Georgia high school shooting suspect's mom oh, defends her son. You want me to go to that oh, one? Yeah, because I, mean, I, I didn't even her hear about the mom. In message to victims' families. So let me read this to you. Very, oh, wow. very weird what happened. What? Tragic, obviously, but very yeah. weird what happens here. So Marcy Gray, the mother of the 14-year-old shooter, Colt Gray, apologized to the victim's families, writing, I want to say that I'm so sorry from the bottom of my heart if I could take the place of Mason and Christian, I would without a second uh, do it. And heartbreaks for the two teachers who gave their lives. On the day of the shooting, Marcy had warned the school counselor after receiving a message from Colt saying, I'm sorry, Mom, while his father received similar texts, I'm sorry, and you're not, not to blame for this. In her letter, Marcy described Colt as quiet, thoughtful, caring, funny, and extremely intelligent, and added, we're all living in a nightmare. My son Colt is not a monster. And with father of suspect charged in Georgia shooting, will more parents be held responsible? This is some, one of the things we've been talking about a lot. Colin Gray, 54, mm -hmm. faces involuntary manslaughter and second-degree murder charges after his son Colt, 14, used a semi-automatic rifle in Georgia school shooting that killed four and injured nine. The father's charges stem from allowing his son access to the weapon. The case follows the landmark Michigan prosecution of James and Jennifer Crumbly, who were sentenced to 10 years. We talked about that story. The Oxford High School in 2021. Legal experts suggest more parents could be held accountable for negligible involving firearms as seen in Michigan's new law requiring... Yes. Locked up guns around minors. Vinny. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, obviously tragedy. He was charged with uh, four counts of felony murder. He killed two teachers and two students, and he injured life-threatening injuries to nine other people. But you know what we, bothers me that we hear more, more than often, Pat, mm. is that the FBI had this dude on their radar, okay? And Rob, can you pull up the letter? This is a joint letter from the FBI Atlanta and the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. This kid, they're basically saying, like, this guy, has he's made threats. He threatened about this stuff. The FBI put him on the 2023 terror threats for plotting to shoot up another school in Jackson, Georgia. Uh, he was interviewed by the FBI after they received several anonymous tips about his alleged online threats to commit a school shooting. And then there's a video uh, of law enforcement, Pat, visiting his home. And I sent it to Rob. Bob, this is the two minute one. Yep. And if you could put on speed one point, whatever, they're coming to the house, Tom, and they're like, hey, listen, you're making these threats. The father uh, before this video actually was like, he's like, if this is true, I can't believe it. Let me bring him out here. And he goes on to say, just from his word, he goes, you're not really going to shoot up a school or anything right now. And he goes, no, he goes, I'm going to take you for your word for it. And that's it. Rob, play this video. Hey, hey Colt, what's going on, bud? Saying that uh, somebody from your old address, over there in Traditions, yeah. that made a threat to shoot up a school. For real? Yes, sir. What? Tell me what. You have any kids or anything with you? Yeah, Colt, right? He, Colt? Yeah, Colt. He's my oldest son. How old is he? He's 13. Do you have, have weapons in the house? I do. I have weapons. Accessible to him? They are. I mean, there's nothing, nothing loaded, but they are. Damn. We do, we actually, we do a lot of shooting. We do a lot of deer hunting. He shot his first deer this year, you know? So, like, I'm pretty much in shock, to be honest with you. Well, I'm a little pissed off, to be even really honest with you. I don't know anything about him saying He's like that. I'm going to be mad as hell if he did. And then all the guns will go away, yeah. and they won't be accessible to him. You know, we, I'm trying to be honest with you. I'm trying to teach him about firearms and safety and how whatever, where this has come from, is no joke. Yeah. Like, it's no joke. But we wouldn't be here if it was. No, I know. I know. And I'm telling you right now, we talk about it quite a bit. Okay. All the school shootings, yeah. things that happen. Yeah, All, scary. Are you getting picked on at school? He is. He's getting picked on at school. How do you do? Just, hey, Colt, what's going on, bud? Is that him on the Yeah, left? that's a kid. So did your dad kind of explain anything to you? Most of them are wearing a cross out on their shirt. Yeah. Did you say something yeah. about school shooting? I never just told him. I don't know. But maybe they misheard somebody else. They misheard somebody else. Somebody else. Never ever said. No, I swear. I'd, I'd, I'd hate to. Yeah, you know, my boss was Are leaving. You like, you know, I don't know how old this information is, and if you want to wait till Monday to follow up. Like, nah, he's, I gotta do it he, he's basically so saying, oh, did you say something happened? I didn't yeah. do my job. That'd be, that, I, I feel pretty bad about that. Take it into work, and I hope you're being honest with me. I'm not saying you're lying, but it's. Seriously, it's it's not unusual for people to lie. This is a year and a half. Yes, yeah. that's what you're telling me. I got no choice but to take it to work. Right? I'm taking but, your word. But like I was telling dad, if you find out otherwise, then it's a different story. Okay? It's a really different story. So my, this is my exactly Pat. So this is a year before the shooting. The FBI has him on a list because he's making threats of shooting a school. So they send sh uh, the, the sheriff to the house just to say, hey, listen. Is, did you really say that? Are you going to do that? No. And he goes, well, I'm going to take your word for it. Okay. And what people need to understand is like the father has these guns. They're available to somebody that's threatening. And I'm sorry, you got to take action. Oh, what's that, Tom? 
Read the quote from the grandfather. The grandfather says, uh, which one is it right here? Yeah, highlighted. Uh, Palmas believes that Colt was driven by his father to commit the crime, stating Colt has to pay for what he did. He was driven. No question in my mind. He describes his grandson as a good kid uh, before being influenced by a dysfunctional dad who was a screamer and a hollerer. And I mean, it doesn't help that he's getting what? picked on at, at school as well. But uh, it's just the, the last time this, like you said, Pat, happened in Michigan. I'm so happy that they're keeping uh, having the parents accountable for this. And it's like the FBI. How many more times do we have to hear that they have somebody on radar that is threatening to shoot up a school and then nothing happens? No, they, they go on and they do the crime. OK, and I think the schools, guys, we protect Everybody gets protected. Everywhere you go, all the people from Congress, everybody has an armed guard with them. Why is it when it comes to our children in these schools, there's zero protection for these children? And I hate when people say that we don't have the money, the resources. We are giving hundreds of billions of dollars for, for countries around the world that I'm sorry to say, it, sometimes there's wars and children, children are getting killed. Why not? Take that money, use our resources, hire people to come in these schools, uh, metal detectors, have some people walk around that are armed to prevent it. I think I think it's a no brainer, Tom. We can present we can protect passengers and airplanes, attendees, fans coming to an NFL game. Anybody walking to any stadium, hey, we just had an event, and since it was a large event, we had appropriate security at the vault. Yeah. yeah. Very appropriate, regular stuff because of the age in which we live. Mm -hmm. And what galls me is 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 that, I mean, you could go back and do the autopsy on the, the relationship of the father and the, and, and the son there and see what the granddad is saying. And you can see a lot of red lights flashing. But why don't we make the schools tougher, harder targets? That's all I want. If we do it for football games, we do it for baseball games, you do it for NBA games, you do it for college football games, you do it for when you get on an airplane, you do it if you go to a public event, and some churches are doing it now, and says, why can't we do it for schools? That way, regardless of what's happening at home, regardless of what's happening with the parents, and we want to get a hold of that, we, we are making our targets tougher and safer. And I, and I agree, but, but the fact that a, 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 a law enforcement officer just takes his word that he's not going to go and go through with the freaking massacre. Like, what are you talking about? He's saying he wants to shoot up a school. It's over, Pat. Me personally, I would have said to the father, we we have to get rid of every single gun in your possession because of your child making a uh, terrorist threat. Did the I'm father sorry. sound convincing? Not I, I, a little bit, but he's holding a beer, so it's hard to take him Did serious. He, was he hiding behind the door? Or did he walk out to talk to the officer? No, he walked out to talk to the officer, but the same token. He, training, so you're asking the officers to do a little bit of mind reading? Reading, and then no, no. he comes out on the porch, he sits down, he doesn't run for them. He doesn't say, you guys have a warrant. What are you guys doing here at my house? He sits down. He said, no, I take this very serious. This is very serious. We have these conversations and he's very folksy and he's very, he's trying to identify one. Matter of fact, we go hunting. He had his first year yeah. this year. So in the realm of that, what are the what do the officers have to work with at that moment? I know I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying the child admitting and the father saying, okay, he was bullied. The father's drinking and I'm just putting a piece of everything together. The father's drinking a beer. He's bullied in school often. And now he's making terrorist threats to shoot up the school, Tom. It has nothing to do with the father, to, meaning I, I understand he has something to do with it. But my thing is you can't have guns at your house now. I, I'm sorry. You, because he's saying, yeah, he has access to them, but there's they're not loaded. You could get bullets easy anywhere. Vinny, do you know how many parents in the West, do you know how Ugh. many parents in farmland and country land mm. have guns laying around in the kitchen, in the drawer, in the above? I mean, it's literally everywhere. Yeah. It's not, and they're loaded most of the time. Of course. It's not like, so if somebody comes in, they're ready to light it up, yeah. right? Mm. So I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know if this is like the only father that is doing this in the in the West or in the country. But but is the kid getting caught by the FBI for threatening to shoot the schools? What I'm saying is he's giving you the warning sign. I want to shoot up the school, and then you just go, okay, you're not going to do it, right? And then you just let him go. That, what what, what we, should they do? I'm actually curious. I, what I, you think I, they should I, do? I'm, I'm sorry, PBD. If you make a terrorist threat like that, even if you're underage. I mean, besides being on high alert, that kid cannot mm -hmm. go to that school. You can't go to that school again. And I'm talking like the, the father's guns, Pat. I'm sorry, you can't have guns in this house. Like something has to be done. Yes. I don't know what the legality part of it is, but I'm actually happy though, because now the father, the father was arrested, Tom, for, I mean, uh, for manslaughter, manslaughter charges, correct? For all four of the people deceased? Failure, to, because what he said that the guns were secured when they came to his house, he's being arrested for failure to control the firearms. Yeah.
So, yeah. and I get and, people, and, and I subsequently, get it. and subsequently, because those firearms are used in this horrible, heinous crime, he is subject to the manslaughter charge. And Pat, you nailed it. I was, I was stationed in Great Falls, Montana. Everywhere I, there was guns, everywhere. But when your child, and I'm sorry, this is the upbringing. If your child is threatening to shoot up a school and then he goes through with it, it's going to have to fall on you. You're, you gave him access. Well, it is. That's I, right. That I agree the with father's Vinny. been arrested. Yeah. I agree with Vinny. There needs to be drastic change here. How old do you have to be to buy a gun, purchase a gun, to purchase it? 18, 21? What it is depends it? on the state, but and, okay. and then it's a it's a 10-day waiting period, so, sometimes right. more, because so no I want to make sure you're not buying it to go kill somebody okay, right so then. The, no one answer under, is 18. Okay, so no one under 18 should be able to have, have a gun, and you can shoot a gun, I assume, with parental supervision. I would assume that's how that works. Kind of like when you're 15 and driving a car. No, I so, think if you're 18 years old, you could buy a gun. You can go no, to no, a No, no, under range. 18. Oh, I, I have no idea. Okay. Well, I think there needs to be a drastic change because the problem, it's just getting worse. Tom, you talk about case studies and following the trends. Rob, if you pull up this thing from WAPO right here, it all started with Columbine. I remember I graduated high school right, right around that, 1999. And Columbine happened, and we're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, that's crazy. School shooting, Aurora, the, everything. But- Here's the spot map of basically everything that's happened. It's getting more and more and more and more. And 2023, this past year, is the largest part of the graph. So meaning there's only becoming more school shootings than ever. It says here 417 school shootings have been since 1999, which was Columbine, where those mm -hmm. two guys in cloaks, black cloaks, came in and just shot up the school. 383,000 students have experienced gun violence at school. And look at our, you know, we, we, we say, you know, the most important, precious things in our lives are our children. Why aren't we doing anything? Yeah. You talk about Gen Z, what's going on with them, you know, their anxiety, depression, social media. Drugs. Oh my I mean, God, that, yeah. all that. How much did this play into this effect? How much is the fact that you got to go to school to learn? You got your book bags, you're ready to go. And even the fact that you're like, today might be my last day on earth. Yeah. Uh, while I'm in class, that is the reality of being in school, in public schools. That's scary. And you saw what J.D. Vance said the other day, and he's like, I don't know how to tell you this, but I don't feel good saying it, but our schools are soft targets. They are. Gun-free zones are the or where people... So, <laughs> that's the, the, you know, if you're following the trends, unfortunately, I don't see this with any joy in my heart. It is going to happen next week. It's going to happen next month. It's sad to see... But this is the reality of living in America. But listen, let's not do anything different, guys. That's what I'm saying. Let's not do anything different. What do you let's think? just if you're saying let's just have thoughts and prayers. What solutions do you have? I'm not here to do this to offer solutions. What I'm saying is I'm an advocate for the 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 same can't continue. If you're a school, like number one, start with the schools. Yeah. What What are the schools doing different? No metal. There's no metal. You know, they came up with ideas that are, in my opinion, zero percent helpful. Arming the teachers. Now a teacher who's never even shot a gun in their life, who's supposed to be doing science class. All right, then you see things like this. All right, here's a door. All right, cool. They're de developing technology. Let's let the free markets help out our schools because clearly government is doing nothing. Well, but, and who do you think developed this? The government or an entrepreneur? No, probably I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm assuming it's an entrepreneur. But, but, what needs but, to be done differently? But, but Adam, but here's the thing: nothing is being done. When you say they're just going to give a gun to a science teacher, it's not that they're giving it to. People that are trained that know how to use it. But here's the thing. Besides the teachers, why not? We have billions. Adam, how much did we give just to Ukraine in the past four years? $200 billion. Don't Whatever tell me we number. can't hire ex-veterans that obviously don't have you know mental issues or PTSD. Put one, dude, just a deterrent. If you know that there's going to be an armed person in the school, yeah. you're going to think twice. If there's a metal detector and you're nailing it, let's do something but, because just not doing anything isn't helping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to almost sound contradictory right now because I'm just trying to found a solution here because yeah. okay, so you know how they say uh weapons don't kill people people kill people we see the stabbings that are going on yeah, in the course. uk we see this they're gonna find a way of if course. you take away the guns you take away the knives they're gonna take a car and run you over yeah. they're gonna so the the mother says uh my son colt is not a monster no he is he decided to go to school one day, and shoot, shoot up the school, kill four people so there's a few things and injure nine people let me yeah ask you're a, a monster let me bro. ask you a question were you ever bullied in school? Ever? Yes. Whatever age? Big time. Yeah. And we who, all have. Well, Everyone's dealt with bullies. I know. But who did you talk to? Who did you talk to? My mom. You did? 
Who'd you talk to? Who'd you talk to? My dad. Who did you talk to? I would go right up to the bully and start a fight. I no, mean, I'm, honestly. Yeah, literally, I'm like, yeah, well, let's go, bro. Uh, like, how, meaning, how, like, if you're going to get bullied. How old were you the first time you were bullied? Uh, eight, middle, ten, middle school. Middle school. No, ten, in elementary school, nobody was messing with me. But in middle school, like, you could, they, listen, there used to be something called Cracker Day in Miami in, in middle school. What's Cracker Day? Yeah, well, you know, luckily you ain't a cracker, Pat. Uh, you would go get oh. beat up. Tom was like, oh, so has nothing nothing to do Tom, with, Tom, you wouldn't last a minute, Cracker Day. So it has buddy. nothing to do with saltines or ricks. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> you wouldn't that? last a minute. Tell him, Tom, Adam, what cracker is Cracker Knockout Day. Floridians, have you ever heard of a cracker? You used to get roughed up. You know, Straight Preston, up. when we went to school, it was this crackers is, This and is cheese. DEI on steroids. What does it say here? I'm watching Comedy Central. <laughs> Nigel, you kill so, me. Yo, because I, I was always like the one white kid on the black basketball team, so I, I was in the mix here, but... You would get in fights. You'd get bullied. Yeah. But you have to stand up to bullies. You might get your ass whooped, but show up to school the next day. Show up to the court the next day. But Pat, where are you, where are These going? days, you you now can react and uh, you get I'm bullied. You, and you go shoot up to school. That what I'm saying is, uh, what wh when you're bullied, who do you talk to? Okay. You talk to who? A mom or a dad or somebody, right? Sometimes you don't talk to somebody. You're embarrassed. If the father, if the mother, whatever, so you don't bring it to anybody. Mm -hmm. The kids who don't talk to anybody when they're being bullied or in school when someone's being bullied and you don't handle it properly. So how do you create an environment where that bully can be managed? Because it's the bully that drives somebody to make a decision like this. So one, parents are responsible. Two, kids are responsible. What are you going to do? Bully's responsible. So are you going to say, let's eliminate all bullies? That's not going to happen. Bully's not going away. Schools, you need more cameras, accountability. You know, snitching, telling each other, hey, that kid's bullying the other person. Or what? Okay, so that's the problem right there. So you, how do you handle bullying? So then the other one is talking to parents, values, principle, protection, love. And then it's the kid, right? I remember many years ago when I was talking to this guy and I asked him the question about uh, pull the trigger. This guy I interviewed when he his, his job, but, but, dude, the guy had the weirdest job. His job was... He was a Jim Clemente. Can you pull up Jim Clemente, Rob? Go type in Jim Clemente. Jim Clemente. Jim Clemente. Yeah, right there. What's his job? Zoom in and let's see what his job is. His job was zoom in, FBI. Uh, so an American author, New York Sparks, a profiler, podcast co or something. No, but he was something else. Go Lord. This guy would interview people right after they killed somebody. Oh, man. Oh, wow. And you're being accused of the person that you killed. Clement worked at the FBI 22 years, where he was an expert on child sexual abuse, victimization, abduction, and homicide. He's also an expert in criminal behavior profiling. So you're being accused of killing your wife. He would sit right next. He would interview first. <laughs> he worked undercover, multi and so on. So I have him on a podcast. Hmm. And I asked him, I said, these serial killers, what, what gets somebody to be a serial killer? I'll never forget what he said. I wrote it down in my notes, so I have it here. He says, nature versus nurture, right? He says, genetics, genetics loads the gun. Wow. Genetics oh, loads the gun. And genetics is who? Your father, your so grandfather, here, your blood. nature. Genetics loads the gun. Personality and psychology, that's you, yeah. aims the gun. The, oh, yeah. He says, your life experiences pulls the trigger. Wow. Hmm. That's sick. That is so heavy, Right. So I, he, when he said it, I got the chills. I wrote it Jeez. down. So again, genetics loads, loads the it. gun, okay? Personality Points and psychology it. aims it. Experiences pulls the trigger. Wow. Hmm. So where is this one here? So the father loads the gun, father. taught him, okay? Personality and psychology is who? Colt. The kid. Yep. Yeah. What, so what's the, the bully, life experience? The, bu the, the, bully, the bully was the... Pulls the trigger. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand you guys are sitting here like, yeah, we should do this and we should do that and we should do this. If that's the factual state, like if that is really what it is, so everybody in the con living in the country and South is going to go to jail? You know, there, there is some of it that's the person, the way they're born. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a family can have four kids, five kids, 10 kids, three kids, two kids. You see, one of them is wired in a little bit like in a, in a different way. So, and then you just have to make sure you pour as much love into the family, as much love into it. So somebody doesn't get tempted to go there because when you're angry, what does your brain go when you're angry? You go places. Rage. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, right. You come here. But man, I mean, that experiences, 
you have to find a way to make sure bullying is not acceptable at all in your school. Totally. By the way, this Saturday, <laughs> I am doing a book signing at local Fort Lauderdale. Uh, for those of you guys that want to copy the Academy and you can't find it at Barnes & Noble because it's selling out, if you go to the Barnes & Noble at Fort Lauderdale, that is the address, Rob. If you go a little higher, 2051 North Federal Highway, Fort Lauderdale, 3305, I will be there at noon signing books. They also have copies of Choose Your Enemies Wisely and Your Next Five Moves. You buy the book, I'll sign it. All of us are going to be there. You'll meet a bunch of guys that will be there at the bookstore. I, I'd love to see Barnes & Noble look outside saying, what the hell is going yes. on with all these value Oh, it's going to happen too. Up. Anyways, we'll see you guys there. And then also for those who missed the Vol Conference, ridiculous conference, the recording is officially available for those of you around the world that couldn't attend. Now you can go to Rob. Can you put the link before or below, or is there a QR code? I'll if, put the link. If you can put the link in, in chat, or if you can put the link in a uh, 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 comment section, go get it. I think it's like, I don't know, 20 hours of content. I mean, one of the days I went 13 and a half hours straight. There's a lot of stuff about raising money. There's a lot of stuff on strategy. We'll get there. Uh, we, I mean, it's just insane, insane event that we had. Uh, but the recording is officially available for the vault. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.